But from a physician's point of view, I got some real problems with eating flesh on this level on a daily basis. Yes, you'll keep yourself in chronic ketosis. You'll deplete the glycogen out of your muscles and you will run on fats. This state of ketosis is a remarkable state when, because back in ancient times, in these Paleolithic times, it might be days before you found the next berry bush with fruit on it or the next zebra carcass rotting in the sun. You may have to fast five, six days, like it or not. And during this time, you indeed run off the fat in your muscles. You run into the fat in your tissues and you go into this ketosis state. And it's a, you're not hungry and you're in an action kind of state. And it's great for a few days, a week, two. And in our clinic, we do water fasting. We'll pe we do long fasts. We'll do 30 days up to 40 day fasts. And these folks are in ketosis. We watch them like a hawk. We're checking them twice a day. We're drawing blood. You don't do this on your own. But you, in medical supervised fasting, we take advantage of the ketotic state. There is a power in it. But it's a stress. These folks turn into dish rags after a while. And my viewing of ketosis is that it's, yes, body can do it. It's useful for a while. But the analogy that I use is an automotive one. When you're driving down the H1 and you're behind a slow truck, what do you do? You pull out into the passing lane, you hit the accelerator, and your engine finds passing gear. And that surge of power comes from the engine, room, and you blow past the truck and you see them fade in the rearview mirror, and then you pull back into the lane. Yay, passing gear, wonderful, great. But if you're in San Francisco, you don't want to drive to Seattle in passing gear. You will burn out your bearings. You will destroy your engine. And the ketotic state is the metabolic equivalent of passing gear. It's a special state. You can stay in it for a while. But in my judgment, you don't want to stay in it month after month. Why? These ketones are acid. We're talking about acetone, beta-hydroxybutyric acid. These are acidic molecules. You're giving your body a constant acid load, free fatty acids. Your blood is filled with fatty acids. This is a state of acidosis. This is not an easy state for your body to contend with month after month. All this acid is hard on your bones. It uh, tends to make you lose calcium out through the urine. Magnesium goes out as well. And you're eating animal flesh. All that DNA in that animal's muscle turns into stuff called uric acid. Man, your kidneys have to deal with it. And if they don't deal with it efficiently, you're going to get uric acid kidney stones. You're going to have these uric acid crystals settle out in your joints and give you gout. It's a dirty fuel. When you eat sugars, when you eat carbohydrates, it turns into carbon dioxide that you breathe off and water that you pee out. Those are the only waste products of sugars. But you're running on fats. You are generating fatty acids and ketones and uric acid. This is a dirty fuel, and your body's got to deal with these waste products. Been well shown, and Dr. Michael Greger has some good pieces on his nutritionfacts.org website. High protein diets hurt the kidneys. We were never meant to deal with these high protein loads meal after meal after meal. It's one of the major reasons kidney failure is so prevalent in this country. And a good nephrologist, who he's got a patient going into kidney failure, first thing he does, put them on a low protein diet. They know how toxic protein is. And the paleo folks are saying, more protein, more protein, more protein. These folks are writing themselves a ticket to the dialysis machine. If you are eating animal flesh, you're eating a molecule called carnitine as part of every animal muscle. Hear this. The food we eat determines the bacteria that live in our gut. Our microbiome, these trillions of microbes that live in our intestinal tract, is determined by the food we eat. You eat a bunch of sugars, you're going to summon up sugar-eating bacteria. You eat a bunch of meat and eggs every day. <clears throat> you're eating a tremendous amount of carnitine and choline in the eggs. Well, natural law, you're going to summon up bacteria that eat carnitine and choline. 
They have names, Clostridia, Streptococci. They don't care about you. They can't wait for that next chicken breast without the skin to come down or that next salmon steak to come down because they will take this carnitine and choline and turn it into stuff called trimethylamine. Who cares? Well, you should because your liver will take that trimethylamine and turn it into trimethylamine oxide. This is a molecule from hell. This drives cholesterol into the artery walls. And these paleo guys at the gym working out in their buff bodies, these are the ones who drop dead on the treadmill at 49. And they do the autopsy and he's all clogged up. Oh, he looks so healthy. His cholesterol went down. Where did the cholesterol go? Into his artery walls, among other places. <clears throat> we are not, your cat, a mountain lion, will never have this problem. They never develop atherosclerosis. But we are herbivores in an herbivore body. We eat the diet of mountain lions. We pay severe problem, uh, penalties for it. And this is one. Another molecule that the paleo folks are eating every day, stuff called endotoxin. Where does it come from? It comes from bacteria. Where do the bacteria come from? From the guts of the animals. The slaughterhouses are reeking with the gut bacteria of the cows and pigs and chicken and sheep that they eviscerate all day. Every cutting surface in the slaughterhouse has a film of bacteria on it. Every piece of meat that the paleo folks buy, organic or not, is covered with gram-negative bacteria from the animal's guts. These bacteria die. And when they die, their cell walls break up and release this stuff called endotoxin. This is a nasty molecule. This sets off inflammatory reactions throughout the body, raises your white blood cell count, makes your gut leaky. I'll show you that in a minute. And just to point out, endotoxin is heat stable. When you cook the burger, doesn't get rid of the endotoxin. When you deep fry the chicken, doesn't get rid of the endotoxin. You're still eating the stuff. And one of the charming effects of endotoxin is on your intestinal wall. Here's the wall of your intestine. Here's food going by up on top here. The job of the intestine is to absorb food molecules uh, into your bloodstream and send them to the rest of your body. But the intestinal tract has an important barrier function. There's a lot of stuff going by in the food stream you do not want in your bloodstream. Undigested food proteins, the breakdown product of bacterial cell walls, yeast fragments, you don't want that in your gut, in your, in your bloodstream. And a healthy gut wall will not allow these molecules to get in your bloodstream. But endotoxin damages the seal between these cells, the tight junction, and as a result, molecular spaces open up between the cells and big molecules that have no business getting into your bloodstream start flowing through your tissues. They flow through your joint membranes, set off inflammatory arthritis, flow through your bronchial membranes, set off asthma, flow through your immune system, set off lupus, um, various autoimmune diseases, a gift of the endotoxin and other molecules that we ingest. But our paleo folks are eating this stuff three times a day. Animal muscle has a stuff in it called new 5 gc Only animals make this. This is a very inflammatory molecule. You can find this stuff in the joints of rheumatoid arthritis patients, in the plaques of coronary artery patients, and only meat has it, and our paleo friends are eating it three times a day. And if you do a search on new 5 gc you'll see uh, the inflammatory reaction that it sets off. And finally, well, not finally, but if someone asks me, Doc, I want to cause a colon cancer, how do you think I should go about this? It's simple. Pack your colon full of meat three times a day. Let that sit on your colon wall and rub those carcinogens that get created by cooking the meat. Let it, they got a long time to rub against the colon wall here. It's no accident that most uh, cancers start in the descending and sigmoid colon. That's where the exposure time is the longest. That's where the fecal mass remains the longest and rubs on the colon wall. The links between flesh eating and colon cancer are beyond dispute at this point. And finally, fats clog up your insulin receptors. 
All these folks are insulin resistant. This is why they say stay away from carbs, because when they've been eating this kind of diet, the fat, and it's a high fat diet, infiltrates into their muscles. And this stuff called intramyocellular lipid, it's fat in the muscle cells, starts building up, clogs their insulin receptors from the inside, and they go diabetic. So when they eat sugar, their blood sugar spikes up because the sugar can't get into the cells because their insulin receptors are all blocked up. So that's why they say stay away from those carbs. But us plant eaters, there's no reason to stay away from carbohydrates. Our insulin receptors are open. You eat rice or quinoa or carrots, blood sugar will go up, comes right down. But the paleo folks create this problem for themselves with this high fat diet and then they blame those carbs when the carbohydrates are innocent, we are carbohydrate burning organisms. It's all this fat that's causing the problems. So I, I don't care how fit and buff these folks look on the outside. On the inside, as a physician, my fear is these nice folks are setting themselves up for an epidemic of colon cancer, heart attacks, strokes, autoimmune diseases, diabetes, inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, colitis. This is a diet of death. It's mostly young people that are into this. And when you're 25, you can eat linoleum glue and get away with it, you know? But don't think they're getting away with anything. And they're creating old man's diseases and old woman's diseases in their arteries and in their lymph nodes and in their breasts and their prostate gland and their immune system. This is a diet of, this is not a healthy diet. This transgresses natural laws from our anatomy to our behavior and our very nature.